Welcome to the show, everybody. My name is Mark Farzana. This is the Farzi Show, presented by MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. Lovely to have you along for the ride. So uh, before I do anything, I just want to say this. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks had three head coaches this season. Um, Adrian Griffin, Joe Prunty, 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 okay, uh, and that, that, that Glenn Rivers fellow, right? Uh, they had three head coaches. Only one of those three head coaches that I just mentioned finished with a record under 500. Okay, only one of those three coaches finished with a sub 500 record. Do you have any guesses as to who that would be? Well, you know what? Let me let me just give this to you because I like to be a fountain of knowledge. Okay, uh, Adrian Griffin was uh, 30 and 13, so that's not under 500. Uh, Joe uh, Prunty, Prunty, I don't remember. Uh, he was two and one in his three games. So there's that. And then Doc Rivers, Glenn Rivers was 17 and 19. That is beep, boop, 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 boop. That is under 500. That is a uh, two games actually under 500. And uh, yeah. Now, some might say that Doc Rivers has not helped us. Glenn Rivers has not helped the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, and you know what? Yesterday, if you if your main goal was to avoid the play in tournament, yeah, 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 he probably probably, but yeah, he he did not help in the, in that regard because if he beat the Magic, then the Sixers obviously would have jumped up to the sixth seed, and all would have been beautiful. Uh, but I'll say this: it's all about the road to the Eastern Conference Finals. It's all about the road to the NBA Finals, and I don't think the Celtics are getting bounced down anytime soon. I think it's going to be a while before the Celtics are sitting home watching games and all that. Uh, so I, with you know, not including the playing tournament. So I think it's going to be a while before they're bounced out. They're a very, 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 very good basketball team. And even if Joel Embiid played every game this season, seventy-five games, seventy games this season, even if Joel Embiid played that, I still don't think that the Sixers would have gotten to the sixty-four wins that the Boston Celtics were able to get to this year. Now with Tyrese Maxey and with Joel Embiid, their win percentage is right up there with. Uh, Boston's like 780 win percentage, whatever the heck it was this year. Uh, so they would have been close, but I don't think they would have gotten to the 60 win marker this season. Um, my thing is, it's all about the road to the finals, and you might maybe this way if I can break out maybe just one pom pom, not the two poly pom poms, but just one pom pom. This might be and probably is the easiest road to at least the Eastern Conference Finals that the 76ers have had in a very, 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 very long time. They've been the number one seed. They've been a three seed. They've been a two seed. They've been high seeds, right? But they've gotten bounced out against those six, seven, or eight uh, playoff seeds. And that's obviously not great. But this time around, I kind of get the feeling that the 76ers are the hottest team. If you're going to be in the play-in tournament, be the hottest team in the NBA going into that play-in tournament, which the Sixers are. Eight straight wins to end the season. They certainly seem to have the right mindset that, hey, we haven't done anything. Yeah, we got to prove ourselves. And we'll hear from Tyrese Maxey in a moment about his uh, mindset going into this play-in tournament and how they've kind of been in this mode already for about uh, two months. So that's kind of where they're at mentally. But when it comes to going into the play-in tournament, you want to be at least the hottest team in the NBA, and that's what the Sixers are. And you could say that the Sixers, yeah, right now are, I mean, the seventh seed in the NBA, but the weird thing about the play-in tournament is now that you've, as the seventh seed, you now have to play to win the seventh seed in the NBA playoffs. Okay. Uh, so that's what this is for, the play-in tournament. So now the Sixers have to win to earn something they already have. Cool. So for the people that are like me, and they're at least optimistic that this should be maybe a team disguised as a seven seed that is really a uh, top two, top three, if you can consider the way the Bucks season went, they're probably with a healthy Joel Embiid throughout the year, at worst, the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. So they could be, now they have a chance to prove it, a seventh seed, or really a two seed that is masquerading as a seven seed. They pull the mask off in the playoffs and be like, ah, surprise. Guess what? We're actually a number two seed. We just didn't have our best player really for the majority of the year. But anyway, yeah, here we are. Like something out of 
um scooby-doo well let's see who this really is it's old man withers anyway uh so uh we're really a two seed surprise uh that's the way i'm hoping this all breaks down here now watching them oh hold on let me now, 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 now let me get to the not so great part of it the definitely not even one pom pom part of it <sighs> just like nobody wants to face the the hottest team in the NBA going into the playoffs. And, and yeah, one of the teams they did beat in their eight-game win streak was against the Miami Heat, and what a game that was. And every time the Heat started to make a run, the Sixers found an answer. Ricky Council, the fourth, and it was one of the guys answering. You know, It was all great. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. But just as you want to be the hottest team in the NBA going into the play-in tournament, nobody wants to face the hottest team in the NBA going into the play-in tournament. Nobody wants to face playoff Jimmy Butler in the play-in tournament. And nobody wants to face the Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler in the play-in tournament. Do the Sixers want that smoke? You know what? Sure. <laughs> they, they, want, they want that smoke. Does Joel Embiid want to beat his buddy Jimmy Butler? Does Tobias Harris want to beat Jimmy Butler? You're damn right he does. Tobias Harris over me. That was the first thing I thought of in this game, in, in the game yesterday, because of the way Tobias Harris played. Um, and really the way Tobias Harris has played to end this season. Here's something that I, back to the pom poms. Here's something that I found very uh, enjoyable about yesterday's game. First off, yesterday was a, was a playoff game. The, the, the Sixers were playing the game. No, no, they didn't have Joel Embiid going up. We'll have we'll have Nick Nurse on that. Not concerned. He'll be fine for the playoffs. This is precautionary. You should be able to beat uh, the Brooklyn Nets without Joel Embiid, and that's exactly what the Sixers did yesterday. But in this game in particular, this thought ran through my mind because I've been I've spent a lot of time over the last two months praising Kelly Oubre, and I rightfully so. He has played phenomenally well for the 76ers down the stretch. He has emerged into uh, that solid third guy after Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. And this thought crossed my mind yesterday during the game. Kelly Oubre is exactly what Tobias Harris is supposed to be. Now, you might say, oh, Kelly Oubre, he's not a max contract guy. You know? And I'm like, you know what, though? If he played, if, if Tobias Harris under Joel Embiid and James Harden under Joel Embiid and uh, Ben Simmons, uh, if if Tobias Harris played the way Kelly Oubre played to end the season, we'd be ecstatic about Tobias Harris being here because it's not just about 15, 20 points per game or anything like that. You know, it's not, it's not about that. It's about when he scores those points, when he steps up. That's the thing that doesn't tell you on the box score. So that's why... I go back to my phrase, the, the numbers never lie, but they sure as hell can deceive. Kelly Oubre comes up with clutch points. Tobias Harris doesn't really come up with clutch points. So as I'm watching Kelly Oubre and the Sixers wind things down uh, in the regular season yesterday in their final game, I'm watching Kelly Oubre. I'm enjoying watching Kelly Oubre. At a, I think a put back there in the, the first quarter, you know, aggressive attack on the rim and all that. And then I'm watching Tobias Harris. And I found myself focusing in on Tobias Harris because what I'm doing right now at this point in the season, what I've been doing for a little bit now is kind of concentrating on depth. That's why we've talked a lot about Ricky Council the fourth. That's why we've talked about what you're getting from a guy like Campaign down the stretch. That was why we talked about Buddy Heald hopefully heating up at playoff time. And man, the 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 three threes that he hit in the final 51 seconds of the third quarter. Sixers were already in control of the game, but that just made it a blowout at that point. He hit three threes in the final 51 seconds. Nine points. In un, well under a minute for the Sixers in the final 51 seconds of that third quarter. Th that's, that's the kind of thing he could provide. So I'm looking at depth. But I know that when you talk about starters, you should be talking about depth. But I'm talking about from a scoring perspective and who's the kind of next man up. Obviously, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Kelly Oubre is your top three. After that, Tobias Harris, I feel, in the last month or so of the season, has really settled into more of that fourth score role maybe more so than he has since the days of Jimmy Butler being here. And I know it's not max contract money, but I think at this point we all have to just say, all right, that contract, not great. Obviously not great. The circumstances surrounding that contract, again, not great. Thanks, Elton Brand. But it is what it is at this point. There's no changing it. If you could get this version that you've had for like the last month of the season of Tobias Harris going forward, I'm very happy with that. 
as long as you have the first three guys that I mentioned, and Embiid, Maxi, and Ubre playing at the level that they've been playing, and you have the reserves, you have those guys playing at the level that they've played at to help close out the season, to help put together this eight-game win streak, to help be the hottest team in the NBA going into the play-in tournament and then later the NBA playoffs. That, to me, is absolutely what this Sixers team needs. And it seems like, to me, since the season has started to wind down, roles have been defined, guys have excelled in those roles, most importantly, and this team is more ready than any team the Sixers have had since, since the Jimmy Butler 76ers. And one of the things I've said many times uh, since Jimmy Butler left Philadelphia, since he was not re-signed, since, he, since they did choose not just Tobias Harris over him, but also Ben Simmons and Brett Brown over Jimmy Butler, is you know when I tell the story of the process to the younger generations many years from now, you know, when I tell the story, the end of the story is Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, if he would have stayed, Sixers are probably at least in a championship. I firmly believe that. That I thought the the perfect, perfect compliment to Joel Embiid. Maybe you don't have Tyrese Maxey, but Tyrese Maxey was a late pick. Let's not forget that. Maybe you have him too. Maybe he's being groomed under under Jimmy Butler uh, for more than the two years or a year and a half that uh, James Harden was trying to groom and, and help Tyrese Maxey in his progression. And those are Tyrese Maxey's words, not mine, how, how helpful James Harden was to him. But maybe it's a much different story uh, that Jimmy Butler was the guy that kind of pulled the plug on the process. It's a great idea. It's a great thought to have that Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, when they play this play-in game, it's a great thought to have that maybe knocking off Jimmy Butler will help exercise the demon process, the process demons, and help the Sixers team gain a little bit more confidence to go on and face the New York Knicks. Now, you could say that Doc Rivers, again, did not help the 76ers yesterday and that might be true again if it's only the goal if the goal is only to make it out of the play in tournament but i'm i'm happy to face the knicks in the first round of the eastern conference playoffs i'm happy to face them i like the sixers against the knicks i like a fully health, healthy sixers roster taking on that new york new york knicks roster yeah you could call it you know, the villanova games and all that stuff with the all your villanova players but uh, yeah i want that smoke msg yeah yeah, I want to see the Sixers have success there. Bounce the Knicks out. Yes, please, and thank you. Again, please. Another, please. I want that. And then the Sixers got to take it from there. Uh, but this is not to take anything th anything for granted. I am confident the Sixers will beat the Heat. I am confident if they face the Knicks, uh, when they face the Knicks, they'll win that series. Not to get too cocky, not to get too confident. Prediction-wise, I think that's what the Sixers do. Um, Bet-wise, I also believe that's what the 76ers will do coming up against the Miami Heat. They'll win that game Wednesday and then go on and face the New York Knicks. That's the way I see it all playing out. A uh, couple more things from yesterday's game. Mentioned Buddy Heel, mentioned Tobias Harris's play. Uh, Tyrese Maxey yesterday. I mean, 12 points in the first quarter. If you want to set a tone, if you're Tyrese Maxey, you set that tone in that first quarter. Uh, Tobias Harris helped set that tone in the first quarter. Nico Batum helped set that tone in the first quarter. Mo Bamba getting a start, coming up with blocks yesterday. When I talk about next man up, a lot of times what we talk about with next man up is somebody's injured. We related a lot to the Eagles in the, the 2017 Super Bowl run. Next man up, Malcolm Jenkins, we all we got, we all we need, right? Well, when it comes to the Sixers team, it's not about next man up because somebody's hurt. It's about next man up because... Somebody's cold and somebody else needs to pick them up. Somebody's not hitting their shots from three. Somebody is not finishing at the rim. Uh, somebody's not hitting free throws, whatever. Somebody else is there to pick them up. When one guy's struggling with the Sixers team, the next man steps up. Kelly Oubre doesn't get a full run yesterday. Tobias Harris steps up. Um, Maxie's hitting his threes, so is Buddy Heels in that in that regard. Uh, you don't have Paul Reed starting out the game. You have Mo Bamba stepping up. Defensively speaking, especially, he steps up. Paul Reed created a turnover, went the other way, and all of a sudden you got an easy lay-in for Tyrese Maxie. 
the next man up mentality with this team isn't about injury, although it was when you talk about just the center position with Joel Embiid, of course. But outside of that one major injury, it's been all about whoever's struggling, another guy steps up to help this team win ball games. Yeah, you have uh, some weak legs in uh, San Antonio towards the end of that fourth quarter. Enter Ricky Council the fourth to help make up minutes with this team. Next man up mentality. It's not just about injury. It's also about guys that are struggling. Maybe a little later in the game, again, those weak legs, you get somebody coming off the bench to help you out. That's really been the story of the 76ers over the last two months. And the fact that they could put together eight straight wins to end the season, the fact that, yeah, they put themselves in the position to need to win eight games at the end of the year just to make the last game of the season matter for playoff standings. You'd rather them win those games than lose. Would you rather, I mean, things really wouldn't change much except you'd be going to Miami. At least they got home court advantage uh, in that play-in tournament. Um, when you do look at it, though, when it comes to the Heat, one of the things that is interesting is that the Heat were actually a better road team than they were a home team. Uh, so that's just wonderful. Just wonderful. Um, that's where we're at. Now, as far as the mentality going in, and just in case you haven't seen it, um, I want to make sure you guys – what the heck is going on here? There we go. All right. Uh, all right. Playing some games here. There we go. There's your Eastern Conference standings, just so you see them there. The Boston Celtics, 64 wins, 780 win percentage. Good Lord. Uh, like I said, Sixers are right up there with a healthy Maxi and a healthy uh, Joel Embiid. The Knicks leap, leapfrog the Bucks. Bucks get bumped down to the third seed. The Cavs stay right there at 48 and 34, so they stay there at the fourth seed. Magic bumped down to five. Pacers stay at six. Sixers are at seven. Magic, Pacers, Sixers, all 47 and 35. The Heat just behind them at 46 and 36. And then the rest of the play-in tournament. The um, Everybody gets a trophy portion of the play-in tournament. Chicago Bulls and Atlanta Hawks are down there at uh, nine and ten uh, in the Eastern Conference standings. Now, as far as that mindset goes that we've talked about a lot, Tyrese Maxey, I think, summed it up really well yesterday when he was asked about kind of the mindset and the approach to the year. And now the Sixers have kind of been here for a while already. Man, I think day one at training camp, I kind of knew that, like, I was going to be pushed into this role because of our situations. But My bad, wrong button. Things are jumping around. My apologies. There's uh, Tyrese Maxey on that role. Thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's something that we have to do. It's another another task at hand. I've been we've been playing the playoffs or the playing since I don't know, probably like twenty games. You know, we knew like uh, all these games were gonna matter. So I've been saying I feel like uh, our main goal was to be stepping in the right direction come postseason time, and it is. Uh, absolutely, yeah, they are stepping in the right direction. Uh, whether it's the next man up mentality, whether it's Tyrese Maxey really coming into his own to end the season, whether it's Kelly Oubre establishing himself as that third guy on this team, or Tobias Harris at least turning himself into a, a solid starter for the Sixers. I mean, that's a good thing too. Um, the other thing Tyrese Maxey got into now before the season, we we set kind of a checklist of what we wanted the Sixers team to do in the upcoming year. Um, the, the, the seeding to me in the regular season didn't matter. Sixers have been the number one seed, still bounced out of the second round. So just throw that out the window. I don't care. Uh, I wanted to see a healthy Joel Embiid. Unfortunately, we did not get that. However, it looks like we're going to get a healthy enough Joel Embiid to go into the postseason. And like I said, you'll hear from Nick Nurse in a second on that. No concerns about Joel Embiid. Um, but one of the things was also Tyrese Maxey becoming an all-star. And Tyrese Maxey was in terms of steps forward and progression for his career, this was right on track for Tyrese Maxey. Makes it into the All-Star, career high in points per game, was in, insanely clutch with 350-point games. I mean, this is just a better season than I could have imagined for, for Tyrese Maxey. Uh, I know the All-Star thing is what I predicted at the beginning of the year, but he's even exceeded that when you talk about the time that Joel Embiid wasn't playing. When it comes to the maturity level, and we've referenced many times how he's coached up some of the veterans and Tobias Harris being one of those guys. That's pretty remarkable how much he has stepped into that leadership role. Well, after the game last night, he was asked about the role that he's been thrust into this season and how he has responded uh, and how his teammates around him have responded to it. Here's Tyrese Maxey on the step forward he's taken this Man, season. 
I think day one at training camp, I kind of knew that, like, I was going to be pushed into this role because of our situations. But, um, you know, I give kudos, like, Joel and guys who gave me the, you know, confidence to step up and use my voice and kind of talked about it earlier with you because I feel like I put in a lot of work and guys see that and when you put in a lot of work and guys see that they kind of rally behind you because they know you mean well and for me every time I step on the court no matter what is what I'm doing it's to win and uh, they know that so I don't yell or scream I just like to talk to guys and, and try to help us win games <laughs> um, it's time to win it's time to win Tyrese Maxey was born in the year 2000 all right he was not born in the 90s. He was born in the year 2000. He talks like a guy who was born in 1990. Like He talks like a, a seasoned veteran of the NBA. That's what he talks about. He's 23, folks. Tyrese Maxey's 23 years old. And we. I feel like this adage kind of got ruined a little bit by Carson Wentz. But one of the things he said about Carson Wentz when he took on took the field was, you know, he's playing like a 10-year vet. He's playing a 10-year vet. He's playing like a 10-year vet. Tyrese Maxey plays like a 10-year vet. Tyrese Maxey talks like a 10-year vet. That's the mindset. That's the attitude you want to have in a young player. Every young player in every city. Holiday right now in, in Baltimore with the with the Orioles. They're talking about him right now. You want to talk about those guys as if they are wise beyond their years. Uh, Jalen Hurts, we talk about, oh, he's you know, an old 24, old 25. Uh, Jeffrey Lurie even said it. He's the oldest 25-year-old he knows. <laughs> you want to have that kind of maturity because it, it, it means that person appreciates the moment. It means that they don't have to make a whole lot of mistakes that can be kind of Easily forgiven in youth because of inexperience. No, no, it means that they have fast forward that process in their minds, saying, "No, no, I don't need to be, you know, some goofy kid. I could be a mature young adult and make great decisions and be a leader and motivate." And if the guys on this team, whether it's Joel Embiid, whether it's uh, even Tobias Harris, a veteran, that look at Tyrese Max and say, all right, "All right, young buck, you step up. You keep rising. You be a leader on this team." And Max, he's saying before the year that he knew he was going to be put into that role, that's that's pretty remarkable. And he was ready for it. And I had zero doubts that he would be ready for it this year. Uh, we've talked about guys, uh, Joel and B, or excuse me, uh, Jalen Hurts taking the Hurtsian leap to be an MVP caliber quarterback two years ago. Um, we've talked about Alec Bohm at third base, the uh, meteoric rise he's had as a defensive third baseman. Um, Tyrese Maxey is right there. Tyrese Maxey is right there in terms of that huge Hertzian leap, whatever, Bohemian leap, Bohemian leap. I don't even know what you call it there. Uh, we've, he has taken that leap, and I love watching him play. Nobody's faster in the NBA. The, the, the play I keep going back to is the one that tied it against the Spurs to force overtime that Nick Nurse drew up with Tyrese Maxey getting the ball on the backcourt. And just using every ounce of his speed, a little hezzy there at midcourt, and then he gets the ball from Nico Batum and easy layup. Easiest thing. Looks so easy. And that's because of Maxi's speed. Uh, he's becoming more and more like Allen Iverson in terms of how he attacks the rim. And seeing that aggression is absolutely next level. Uh, I haven't seen a player attack the rim like that since AI. And I look forward, really look forward to the homegrown talent of Tyrese Maxi and Joel Embiid carrying this team for what I hope is at least a deep, deep playoff run. So I'll cross my fingers for that to actually happen. Um, speaking of Allen Iverson, um, now I'll, I'll hold that thought. I'll get to that statue in a second. But first, I want you to hear from Nick Nurse. This is Nick Nurse. For anyone that needs to hear it, on Joel Embiid's knee, he was held out yesterday for precautionary reasons. Here's Nick Nurse on that. Yeah, I mean, listen, he, he did everything at practice yesterday. Um, we just decided out of caution to hold him out. He'll be ready to go. Yeah, he'll be fine. Everybody chill. I think everyone kind of expected that, but just to hear it is, is it's better. Uh, and then Nick Nurse, of course, on the situation taking on the Miami, Miami Heat Wednesday night. Well, um, obviously, um, we've had some great battles with them, Tim. I, I think it's um, always expect that versus them, right? Um, mindset is that we want to keep playing well and 
got to put everything we can into it. It's like, um, you know, kind of the way we've been treating the last month of the year. We've been we've been digging in and playing, playing and playing our guys as whatever we have to and doing whatever we got to do to to win. And we've we've got a good mindset, I think, and just take that into Wednesday. In that uh, in the regular season, and that's I think what you would expect to hear from the head coach, but that's their mindset going into it. Uh, in that game against the Miami Heat, though the last game of the season, they ended up splitting their season series with them two two. Uh, Sixers won one hundred and nine to one hundred and five. They were able to withstand a, a number of Heat runs in that game. They always had an answer whenever the Sixers or whenever the Heat started to come back or started to make a real game of it, which it was. Uh, the Sixers found a way to get control. A couple of things stuck out to me about that game. Joel Embiid played 33 minutes. He scored 29 points in those 33 minutes. Uh, and Tyrese Maxey, if you remember, was one rebound shy of a triple-double. And I remember after that game, Kyle Lowry talking about, he's like, damn, I think he's stupid. <laughs> you got you to gotta chase a rebound or something, man. You're that close to getting a triple-double? You, you, you got to push out your own teammate. You got to get those triple digits, man. Come on. Um, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Ubre had his clutch points as well, finished with 18 in that one, played 41 minutes. Maxi played 41 minutes. And it was it was a fight down to the end. A fight down to the end, especially with the way the Sixers struggled from the end of the really in the third quarter in general. The beginning of the third quarter, they got blown out, and then the end of the third quarter, they kind of rallied uh, and were able to get you know reestablished momentum. And Kelly Ubre had a big, big um part in that in the third quarter in that game against the Heat. I think the Sixers are ready for this challenge. I look forward to this game coming up uh, tomorrow night, or excuse me, for, uh, Wednesday night. And this is the next step. This is the next step for the Sixers. Also, just looking at the box score right now, uh, Tobias Harris didn't even play in that game. Mo Bamba didn't play. Anthony Melton was still hurt. That's the one injury that seems like it's, uh, you'd love to get that help from him. You just don't know what's realistic. The Anthony Mellon has appeared in, I think, two games since the injury and not really not logged a lot of minutes in the process. And it seems like Nick Nurse is more concerned about that than anything. So you might not have a lot from DeAnthony Melton going down the stretch. But I bring it up only because, I mean, that's a that's your playoff rotation. Uh, K.J. Martin was held out of the game. Paul Reed played in the game. Um, K.J. Martin was held out of the game yesterday. Uh, but K.J. Martin played in that game, gave you some good minutes. Paul Reed played in the game. Campaign was already on the team. Buddy Heald was in that game. Buddy Heald struggled mightily in that game. They didn't hit a three for you. Only had two points. That was both from the free throw line. Uh, but this is this is the matchup of matchups that you wanted. Um, if you could avoid the play-in tournament, obviously that would have been great. Um, but this is going to be a huge test for the Sixers. It's not going to be easy. As I said to open the show, other than the Doc Rivers comments I made to open the show, uh, when you look at the 76ers and... Jimmy Butler. Yeah, you've won eight in a row. The counter to that, if you're a Heat fan going into this game or an objective NBA fan, yeah, the Sixers won eight in a row, but this is playoff Jimmy we're talking about. We're talking about a play-in team from last year who made it all the way to the NBA Finals. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. Now, as far as that Allen Iverson statue goes, oh, my Lord. Uh, first off, did... Did people not realize that it was for Camden? Like, all the statues at Camden are tiny. I think a lot of people had it in their head, the Wilt Chamberlain statue. The Ed Snyder statue at the Wells Fargo Center. Those are arena statues. Those are ginormous. Uh, the Philly Philly special. Uh, the Philly special uh, statue. Outside the link, uh, Michael Jack Schmidt, all that. I think people expected that. I really hope that that's coming. And if the Sixers do, in fact, build that arena, I, I you could bet that there's going to be some real statues uh, built uh, around that arena. But the Allen Iverson statue, yes, it was tiny. I was surprised that that many people were surprised that it was that tiny because I mean, I knew where it was going, and they were going to they were going to build a bigger Allen Iverson statue than like a Dr. J statue, or I think Mo Moses thing has one. Chuck has one. Charles Barkley. Those those are tiny statues leading into the Camden practice facility for the 76ers. 
So I, I'm, I'm a little surprised that people didn't realize what it was for. But anyway, uh, seeing all the jokes about it, it made me think of, uh, remember the Little Penny commercials with Penny Hardaway and Little Penny? Chris Rock was the voice of Little Penny. That's what it made me think of. Like People started putting my mind in that realm. And I'm like, okay, well, that's maybe what it looks like a little bit. Uh, AI getting teary-eyed. I mean, he's become, look, he's always been an emotional player. He played with that kind of emotion, of course. But um, he really loves Philly, man. All the love that we showed him throughout his career, he has he's given that right back. It's a really special bond that the city of Philadelphia has with Allen Iverson. Um, and you see that emotion. You see how it hits him. And I remember uh, when I was on the radio at the Fanatic, we did the, the Fan Fest, and AI was the special guest. And I remember he came out to the stage, and they got he got this rousing applause, you know, MVP chants and all that. And he started crying, and he, I'll never forget, you, Philly, you love, you love too hard, man. You love too hard. And that's, that's a beautiful connection. And then to see him up there at the podium on Friday, answering questions, getting emotional when talking about the city of Philadelphia, various interviews he's done since then, talking about how much he loves Philly and the connection he has with the city. I mean, there's stuff like that to just make me go right back to my high school days and watching AI. And um, it's right back to that. Where are we going tonight to watch the game? Whose house are we going to tonight? Pizza and wings. Where are we going? You know, that kind of thing. Um, It'll always make, make me feel like a kid again. Stuff like that. Any time I see 93 Phillies uh, highlights or anything like that, the rain delays in the early goings of this season for the Phillies, uh, there's been a lot of those. This right away makes me feel like a kid again. Allen Iverson is right there. And it's it's really wild. I, I don't like, and I've said this many times, I don't like comparisons. People were comparing A.J. Brown to T.O. when A.J. Brown first got here. And I'm like, A.J. Brown's not even the greatest receiver in his generation. And you're talking about maybe the third greatest wide receiver, second greatest wide receiver all time in Terrell Owens. So let's take it easy on those hot takes, all right? People were comparing the speed of Allen Iverson with Tyrese Maxey. I paused on that. Can you compare that one particular thing? Absolutely, sure. But, but I still don't like to put those names together. But the way this season has ended, Tyrese Maxey's game has become very, very close to Allen Iverson's. And it's all, it's not just the speed. It's not just the quickness. It is the aggression in attacking the basket. And that's something that's going to, it took a while for Maxi to kind of, I think, realize that, yeah, in the NBA, the game's faster and sure and all that. The game's faster, but he's, he's faster than the game. He's fastest in the game. So you can use and abuse that talent, that skill set, that gift that he has and use it at this level to the point where you can exploit the, exploit the weakness and slowness of a defense and compared to your speed. And it took a minute for that to come in. We've covered it before when we talked about Joel Embiid and uh, the, the Ben Simmons year where Ben Simmons wasn't playing for the Sixers, but he was still in the Sixers uniform after falling to the, 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 the Hawks in Game 7. And Maxie was thrust in a role of starter. I mean, talk about being thrust into a role. He was thrust into the role of being that starter. Joel Embiid goes out for like three weeks with, or two weeks with COVID. Maxi takes over in that time. And I think that was really the first step in him realizing, oh, no, 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 no. I got this. I can do this. Harden comes here, starts bringing him along a little bit more. Maxi's confidence grows even more. They have another full year. They have a full year together. Harden leaves. And then again, the torch is handed to Tyrese Maxi again. Hey, this is your team. This is your team. You're the guard. You're the guard. Whether it's bringing the ball up as the point or it's the guy to score as the shooting guard, you're the guard. You're the guard to Joel Embiid's game. Be that guy and be that second scorer. And he has taken it and he's run with it and he's run with it really fast. He was born in 2000. <laughs> and he's this good and he's this mature. Lucky to have him. And I, I really, really look forward to the... Really look forward to the Sixers and the Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid-led 76ers. I really look forward to seeing how far this team can go. Uh, they, the Phillies, that, that wasn't great. That was pretty terrible. That wasn't good at all. Andrew McCutcheon is 300 home run. Uh, good for him. And a Pirates fan caught that at CBP. Did you see that? Um, not a great start for Zach Wheeler yesterday. Pretty awful start, actually, for Zach Wheeler yesterday. Um, yeah, I was flipping back and forth following the game while I was watching the Sixers, and 
at Sixers post game responsibilities on uh, Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, in total, Wheeler gave up five, uh, four earned runs, five hits, did strike out ten, walked three. It was a ninety-two Phillies loss. Just to give you the final, if you haven't seen that yet, and um, all around, not great. Uh, Trey Turner hit his first home run of the season. I- I've been saying it all year with Trey Turner. Two two pitches, no good. Three pitches, no good. He gets to four, five, six, like in that range, and he seems a lot more comfortable at the plate. And he gets that good pitch to hit, and he got it yesterday. Uh, raises average with three hits. He was three for four. Raises average over 300 with a 371 on base percentage. More of that, please. You also had a triple from Brandon Marsh. As he got you another hit, he's still hitting over 300 at 313. You know, there's little things. Nick Castellanos got another hit. I mentioned on Friday, I don't understand why the guy got the boost. I don't like it a boost. Uh, why, why, why is he getting the boost? He's actually starting to hit a little bit over the last week. He's getting boost. I don't like that. Then he walks it off, baby. More of that. How was that glitch? Anyway, uh, but more of that. More of that, please. More of that. Uh, Bryce Saka, another hit as well. Johan Rojas got a hit. So, like, eh, silver lining. Eh, meds, meds. Silver lining. That's what I'm going for as far as the Phillies go. But it does piss me off that they dropped to 8-8 eight eight on the season. Uh, they couldn't win their what would have been their third consecutive series. And they let the Pirates take three or four. Not great. Now the Phillies will be right back at it against the Rockies. Tonight, 6.40 start time. Cal Quantrill will get the start against Aaron Nola. Uh, again, 6.40 start time at Citizens Bank Park. Rockies are god-awful. They come into this series 4-12 uh, on the year. So, yeah, let's um, let's be right back on the winning track. Right back on the winning track would be very, very nice. Uh, let me tell you about my bookie. MyBookie.ag. Oh, um, Tiger Woods. Qualifying for the cut. This guy essentially finished last, and he's like the lead story. The numbers on Tiger Woods at the Masters. <laughs> uh, here they are. Okay. The numbers on Tiger Woods at the Masters. He's what made four, uh, 24 straight cuts at the Masters, longest streak all time. So that's pretty good. Plus 16 this week. Worst score. To par over 17 holes in any career major. Not great. Minus 70, 17 under, I should say, or 70 under, I should say. Uh, scored a par through 100 career rounds of the Masters third best. So there's that. 100th career round on Sunday. Not great, Bob. But uh, it's amazing to me how he still owns the sport. Literally finished last. Didn't make the cut. That's great. I'm very happy that he made the cut. He'd only played, what, 20, 20 holes of golf? Something like that before the Masters. And then, boom, he jumps back out there and he's at least makes the cut. I, I root for Tiger Woods. I, I I mean, wildly entertaining on the golf course, as we know, for as entertaining as golf can be. Uh, but, but hot damn. To make the cut for him is a, a pretty special thing. I know it's weird to say that about Tiger Woods, but th- it, it's pretty insane. Pretty insane at Augusta. Now, let me tell you about MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. Take advantage of all they have to offer at MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. Download the app. Use promo code FARZY. You get up to $1,000 redeemable cash bonus at MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. Want to bet on the world of baseball? You can. Want to bet on the world of basketball? Uh, Yeah, I can. You can bet on it all. World of hockey? Go ahead. Treat yourself. All at MyBookie, MyBookie.ag. Here's the other thing. If you don't want to bet on sports, you can bet on the world of politics if you like politics. You can bet on the world of uh, television if you like television. I don't know if anybody was betting on that uh, that, that bachelor, the golden bachelor people uh, getting divorced after like, what was it, three minutes? I don't know. Anyway, you can bet on that, <laughs> probably. And my bookie, mybookie.ag. So tell, download the app. Use promo code Farzy. Take advantage of all they have to offer at my bookie, mybookie.ag. How about the game time app? Download the game time app to your phone if you want tickets to the game, the comedy show, the concert, whatever the case may be, the big event. Game Time app has you covered. Download the Game Time app. Use promo code FARZY when you create an account. You get $20 off your first purchase. Ticket buying has never been easier than it is right now thanks to the Game Time app. You can preview your seat before you buy it. And how about the Game Time guarantee? If you find tickets in the same section or row on another site or app for less money, Game Time will get you back at 110% of the difference. How about that on the Game Time app? Game Time app is where it's at. 
Download Game Time app. Use promo code FARZY and get $20 off your first purchase. Uh, how about PHL Sports Nation? Philadelphia Sports Nation, enhancing your Philadelphia sports fan experience across all social media and blogs. That's phlsportsnation.com. Let's get to the chat to check to see how we're doing today. Sean Gillespie, what's, what's going on? A little slow. A little slow on the uptake. Not you, Sean. Sorry, my, my computer today. Um, James Alexander, good morning. I wish we had the fifth seed. So do I. Sean Kilrain, what's going on? Diggs, what's going on, Diggs? Good morning. April, hello, April. IBH, Buddy Christ. <laughs> Ooh, Sean, what's it? Uh, Nick Nurse has been playing as a complete team. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. Okay, who uh, April's asking, so who has seen the AI statue in person? Why is it so damn small? That man deserves better than that. I agree. April, here's what I agree. He deserves a hell of a lot better than that. You're absolutely right. And I, to my prediction, he will get better than that. He will have better than that when it comes to a statue. Sixers get their own arena. They're going to build a big-ass statue for him. I have no doubt in my mind. James Banquets? Not confident they will beat James Banquets. That's funny, buddy, Chris. Thank you. Uh, Sean Kilrain, that statue for AI... Was a slap in the face. I just come on. It's just that's a practice facility. Here's what I don't like. Who makes a big deal out of a statue at a practice facility? They've done it for Barkley, they've done it for Dr. J, and now they've done it for Iverson. I think they even did it for Moses. It's a practice facility. If anything, this is the Sixers attempting to give a middle finger to the Wells Fargo Center and uh Comcast Spectacor. Like, yeah, we're going to have the, the statue unveilings, but at our practice facility. <laughs> T-Row, st statue? I thought it was a sculpture. Uh, RR, I find it funny that this, this right here, this right here. I find it funny that they put an Iverson statue at their practice facility. I'm talking about practice. RR, best. Go ahead and take some RR for yourself because you deserve it after that. Uh, that's the best one I've heard so far. April, Lil Penny. Yeah, Lil Penny. Remember Lil Penny? Anthony Hardaway, Lil Penny. Uh, for all the young people, go ahead and YouTube Lil Penny commercials. I'm sure they'll come up. Uh, his knee, his ankle is gone. He shot even par for almost three days. Yep. Uh, that's what it seems like, Daz. But again, he only played like 20 holes of golf before playing this. It's pretty incredible. Uh, Nikki Three Buttons. up, oh, Sean Kilrain. Nikki Three Buttons comes up big Saturday. But we play goose egg. Uh, yeah, we lay a goose egg for Wheeler on Sunday. Yep. Uh, hey, maybe Nikki Three Buttons is coming around, man. Ooh, change the lineup, says Sean Kilray. I want to talk about Topper. He wouldn't change it. Let's go. What did we get yesterday? It was pretty much the same lineup, right? Yeah, I think it was the same lineup. I think you're right. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't miss something because, again, I didn't follow the game really. Uh, oh, yeah, of course. I did see the Grand Slam. That sucked. Because Turner gave the Phillies the lead. And then I saw the home run, and I went, was that a grand slam? Oh, damn. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Uh, yeah, same lineup. Same lineup. <laughs> I mean, if there was a guy to make a big deal about practice with, April, you make a fine point. Babs, it was a figurine. I doubt anyone at Comcast blinked an eye at it. Oh, I agree. That's why I said it was an attempt at a middle finger. It's like people say, hey, yeah, well, you could have said because I insulted you. You didn't insult me. I'd have to give a damn about what you have to say to attempt to insult me. Anyway, uh, thanks to everybody in the chat. You guys are wonderful as per usual. Uh, all right, looking at tonight, we know the 70, well, the 76ers take on the Heat Wednesday. Until then, we have the, the, the Phillies to keep us all warm and toasty uh, coming up tonight and tomorrow night, both 640 start times. And then we have all the responsibility in the world when it comes to the uh the 76ers crossing our fingers and just win that game win that game and let's go baby thanks for watching thanks for listening that's the farzy show everybody my name is mark farzetta uh make sure you guys click like and subscribe on the jacob media youtube channel make sure you guys uh click uh like and subscribe and subscribe make sure you subscribe uh to uh Locked On Sports Philadelphia. That's Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Big game and filling. I'm talking about it after the game on the Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. So make sure you guys 
like, subscribe that as well. For more of me, for instant reaction after the Phillies, instant reaction after the Sixers, I'll be right there on the Locked On Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, also, bonus me today. I got to run over to Fox 29, do a hit over there with my friend Aton Shander because we are bald and we do the bald segment over there. I did. I, what did I do? I ran into a woman at. Where was, oh, it was the Earth's Family Foundation on Friday. I'll have some pictures for you guys for that uh, tomorrow. Uh, Earth's Family Foundation yeah, uh, on Friday, a woman ran out and came up to me and she says, she's like, I love the bald saying. I just don't like when they call you bald. And I said, lady, it's not a secret. <laughs> I don't I don't mind it. It's it's all for the fun of television. Uh, anyway, be running over there to do a to hit this morning. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. My name is Mark Farzad. This is the Farzad Show presented by MyBookie, mybookie.ag. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Catch you guys tonight after the Phillies on the Lockdown Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. See you there. Bye.